It's been a while since the last true Jack and Daxter game. The former most recently enjoyed a spot of combat racing, while the latter dipped his tail into the PSP's waters. It looks as if Daxter got the better part of the deal, because he's returning to the PSP and bringing Jack along with him. Aside from a few dents and holes, this baby can still fly. <laughs> that was close. We've got to find a place to put down. This eco storm is getting worse. This is a game about eco, the life force of Jack's world, and it won't let you forget it. If you can find some green eco, I'll have everything ready when you get back. Almost every scene, pivotal or puny, is about eco. Please allow us to relieve you of your eco. To the point where its significance is relegated to smurfdom. Fine eco, save the world. I wanna go home. Jack and company take to the edge of the world called the Brink in search of eco when attacked by air pirates, also looking for eco. Ah, oh, eco pirates. They hunt the frontier for helpless travelers. The plot is always at the forefront, with plentiful cutscenes playing up the drama and Daxter providing the comic relief, which results in more grimaces than guffaws. What the? Hey! Don't mess with the fur! Plot twists come quick but don't shock, while friendships are forged over open hostilities, making the Lost Frontier feel a little melodramatic, though there's enough to keep you interested as the plot devices trade off. We too are looking for a new eco source to help save the world. Noble pursuit. Perhaps we can be of some assistance. It is called the Eco Seeker, and it is said to point to any major eco source. Some things stay the same. Jack collects eco by destroying enemies and exploring levels, and trades it for powers and abilities. Stuff like increased health or the ability to teleport. Other things change. Get ready to spend about half your time in air combat a la Star Fox, doing barrel rolls and shooting down ships. And finally, some things slide. If you didn't like the monstrous Dark Jack, good news, he's gone. But if you did like him, well, good news too, give Dark Daxter a spin. As his alter ego, the Otzel beefs up for some brief smashing and spelunking interludes. Between the flying and the platforming are quite a few hubs, skies to sail and pick clean of side missions, and plazas to hunt down plot items or take a job busting up bar patrons. There's always stuff to do, and more importantly, things to upgrade. You can buy new moves for yourself, but you can also upgrade your ships with a surprising amount of control. Like the Dark Daxter segments, there's also a few one-off events, like manning turrets or racing with Daxter in a hamster ball. They're fleshed out, but not particularly fun. Keep to the plot, grab some collectibles when you feel like it, and you can soldier through the game. That's some fancy shooting, Jack. Mighty fancy. Lost Frontier's design often keeps you motivated to play, even when the gameplay gets frustrating. The plot is doled out in nice chunks, with plenty of easy-to-find collectibles and upgrades always around the corner. Platforming is pretty straightforward, with only the occasional backtrack needed to get some hidden goodies. The eco skills make for some clever puzzles, and are utilized just enough. It's just difficult to select them on the D-pad when time is of the essence, and you're juggling shoulder buttons and fiddling with the analog stick. Combat is awkward and unfulfilling. The default attack hurdles Jack forward spastically, while both bullets and advanced melee moves give little visual feedback on their effectiveness. Gunplay is haphazard, with a majority of aiming left to the whim of the camera system. You can pan around Jack with the shoulder buttons, and it's effective for flat land, but can be bothersome for some of the more vertical moments. The army of armadillos and robots thankfully go down easy after extended beatings, while boss battles feature puzzle-like elements and life bars, so there's always an indication that Jack is chipping his way toward victory. Flying sections offer a lot of variety. The problem here is they're comprised of repetitive tasks, and they tend to go on for way too long. Shooting down a base's guns and then sending Daxter to hijack a missile and finally fling into said base may sound like fun, but not when you have to do it three times in a row. Checkpoints are plentiful, but the PSP doesn't feel quite right for extended flights. Look out for the lava! Fly around it, Jack! Between the flying and platforming, there's also quite a few quick time events. Forcing a player to perform tiny clockwise circles on the PSP's analog stick should be illegal. Some side quests are fun, the ones that task you with shooting down enemy airships are a high point. Others, like having to find a collectible in 10 seconds flat, are stupid and frustrating. Hey Jack, you won't believe what just Daxter. happened to me. 
Dax, not now. The plentiful pre-rendered cutscenes look great, and the voice acting is decent. Flying shows some great detail, especially when you swoop over an area you marched through earlier while ashore. On the ground, things are simple yet varied, with the abandoned lab and volcano levels looking just like you'd expect. There are a few effects to keep things lively, like the yellow eco-energy that infuses your moves, or the effect that accompanies enemies exploding. <laughs> Early on, it's easy to get lost in the lost frontier. The sappy story drives you on, the new flying segments feel great out of the gate, and you'll be finding collectibles left and right. The game starts to drag later on, though, with its awkward combat and repetitive in-game structure. It's not the new Jack game most fans were waiting for, but as a surrogate portable platformer, it will do in a pinch. Be a better like flying. And Eco. You have proven yourselves truly worthy, as our ancestors warned us. Dark Eco is a dangerous weapon not to be trifled with. <laughs>